Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to the November 2023 energy date interpretation, whatever you want to call it. I'm Casey Aileen Knight, and I love to take a look at the upcoming energies for people who identify as helpers, healers, light workers, star seeds, earth angels, like the names you know, can go on ad nauseum, but basically for the people that are like here to help. I see the world and I have something in me that is ready to just help at least one person at one time. As always, you can take what you like and leave the rest behind, use your own discernment. But how I do these is I feel into energetically the energy of the upcoming month and I weave in some of the astrology. So it's the astrology, my psychic intuition and my capacity to just bring through what is upcoming in general sense. And I want to tell you, it's less psychic reading and more how do we handle it? What archetypal energies are coming through that we are going to be experiencing and how can we best support ourselves through them? I think a psychic reading is cool and all, but like once you have the practical tools to navigate this stuff, good is it really? It's a parlor trick. It's just entertainment. So my shtick always is to help you bring your cosmic magic down to earth, create more stability so you can show up and shine and share your light with the world. Because I really think every single one of us has a really important role to play right now. Some people are here to just be channels for energy to flow through. Some people are here to create. Some people are here to transform. Some people are here to do a million different things. But the more you know you and the more you have this internal capacity to have energy flow through you rather than with all the intensity try to come through you, but you're so full of like density and trauma and drama and stories that the energy goes. <laughs> the more you can have it flow through you, the more you can do the more you can show up, the more abundance you can hold, the more impact you can have in the world, the more you can pull. So if you've watched any of my previous energy updates, you know, since like 2019, stuff is continuing to be intense and there is continued energetic polarities of experiences. There's really going to be distinct categories of people and how they're experiencing the intensity and the energy like two different ways where some people are in flow, some people are really in chaos and overwhelm, and some people that are going to bounce or oscillate between them. So I want to tell you, when I tuned into the November energy, what I immediately got as a visual was symbols of alchemy. Alchemy, we might know as transmutation. I work a lot with that energetically to transform density into something light. So in the past, people talked about turning lead into gold. My personal favorite kind of alchemy, because I can't do the physical lead into gold thing yet, but if, if I do, I'll let you know because we'll be able to play. I'll teach you if I know it. It's about that emotional alchemy. And it's about transforming our inner experience from feeling really heavy and dense into lightness, into flow. So November's image was like arch, literally being turned into treasure. The trash into treasure. You know how they say one man's trash is another person's treasure? I want to say one person's trash can also be turned in the treasure through emotional alchemy in a process that is, people might call it transformation, but it's actually transmutation. Transformation is when a substance can go from one thing to another and back to the same thing again. So water can transform from ice to steam to running water, right? But wood, if wood is transmuted, with fire, let's just say, it'll turn to ash, and maybe some smoke. You can't, without it going through a really big cycle, turn it back into wood. So 
when we do this emotional alchemy, we're able to transmute our personal density and heaviness into this lightness that is basically the gold, the wisdom, the gifts, where your pain gets turned into purpose. People get to choose, though. Not everybody is going to do this. There's a lot of intensity, energy coming in. And I've been talking about this for a long time. The illumination of all of the trash on the planet. Everything that is not true and everything that is true is being lit up so we can see it. That's a very uncomfortable process. But there are ways through this alchemy that we can handle it. The alchemists are the ones that are going to rise to the occasion, use the intensity and the illumination of all of the stuff, all of the trash, and use that energy to propel it for our soul's evolution to create more abundance, more magic, more power. Not everyone is even going to believe that it's possible. Some people are going to get stuck looking at all of the trash, looking at all of the stuff that's not working, looking at all of the personal and collective problems that are so highlighted right now, and they are going to get stuck in that energy focused only on them. They can't see the possibilities. They can't see the solutions, and they're going to wallow. It's okay. Sometimes wallowing for a little while or a long while is part of your journey. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to wallow, but does it feel good? It does not feel good to stay stuck, to feel like there's no hope, to feel like there is nothing we can do. And the alchemists, the people that are like, you know what? I have this power to shift Thing that I've had and turn it into passion and purpose. I'm going to take the problems that I've had and I'm going to turn overcoming them into wisdom that I can share with others. Those people, those people, well, first off, they're going to have a lot more fun, going to be able to make more of an impact. Like how much impact, how much help can you be to yourself and to other people if you are just wallowing, going like, there's a problem, there's a problem here. Oh my gosh, there's so many problems and there's nothing we can do. From that perspective, from that level of consciousness, from that frequency, you really can't do anything because you have to be able to rise to a higher perspective, like the eagle's perspective, the higher self perspective, to zoom out, to be able to see, oh, actually, there are possibilities. There are always possibilities, but we can't see them when we feel like we are stuck in the thick of the density. Now, as we begin November, we are already in what I've always called the dark and twisty Scorpio mysteries. We are in the Scorpio archetypal energy. And Scorpio used to scare the crap out of me. Scorpio energy did not feel safe to me because it's all about the diving into the deepest depths. Here is the thing. Scorpio is the master of alchemy. Scorpio has powerful magic because the deeper you dive, higher you can rise. Feel that. So when we allow ourselves to go deep, to actually look at and feel and work with and understand the issues, the problems, the traumas, the feelings that do exist without bypassing them like I tend to have in the past tried to do. When we go in there, we're able to alchemize through feeling, through this emotional alchemy, and then actually use it to shift our perspective, right? It is potency and possibility as long as you don't get stuck in the deep dive. The other archetype that you can bring in when you're thinking about this Scorpio energy is the phoenix that is able to rise from the ashes, right? There is this capacity for rebirth and renewal from the death, chaos, and destruction. In fact, it's an important part of the creation cycle. So I want you to remember that death and life are actually so intertwined. And right now, at the beginning of November, the veil is so thin that all across the world, 
we have celebrations, venerating our ancestors, or celebrating things like Halloween, the Day of the Dead, All Saints Day, All Souls Day. So there's a very potent time to understand that destruction or death plus creation and new life have to coexist. So it's not something that we need to fear. But how many people are walking around absolutely terrified of death and decay and change and transformation? If we can throw away that belief system that says it's not okay, and we allow ourselves to feel the fullness and the potency of the death rebirth cycle, then we can rise with new energy. And that is what must occur for alchemy. And the people who are wallowing, who are stuck in the energy of it's not okay to change. And I want to keep everything exactly how it is because I'm not ready to let it go or to let it move. They're going to stay stuck. You have to be okay with letting go with allowing things to change, and with the faith and trust that what is reborn is going to be better, right? We always are. Every time we have a death and rebirth in our life, we evolve, right? We grow, we change. We need that shifting and changing energy. If you're hanging on to stuff in November, and you're not allowing yourself to release and let go and be open to the change that happens, through alchemy and transformation, you are going to spiral down and you're going to loop around and you're going to continue to play in the dense heaviness that is absolutely your choice. And you may have more lessons that you need to have in that place. But when you are ready to rise, when you are ready for something new, there's going to be a need to do that deep dive. But then you have to let go of the weights that are holding you down. That's the only way you can rise is releasing the heavy weights. And then you will find that you'll have gotten so strong from trying to hold those weights that you can just freaking fly and there will be this upward spiral, this rise. And from that, you get to see these new perspectives, right? Where we get to see things from that higher perspective. So the alchemist who allows the release, the transformation, transmutation into something new is able to turn their pain into wisdom and their bondage into freedom and liberation. So another thing to be aware of in November right now and just on the world stage, a lot of generational curses are being replayed. And it is our choice. Do you want to do what always has been and succumb to the pain and the feeling like we can't make a change? Or are you ready to heal this and allow it to be transformed into something new, into wisdom, into that feeling where possibilities actually exist? So we all get to choose, right? This is November. Choice. Are you hanging on to the past or are you allowing the past to be your rocket fuel for this new experience personally and then be able to rise into illuminating your personal experience and sharing it with others, which then lights up the freaking world. I want you to choose your destiny and know that your ancestors especially are cheering you on right now. So we're going to move towards the middle of November here, and we're talking about the Scorpio new moon on the 13th, and that is double Scorpio energy. So the power to create something new out of the old is going to amplify dramatically. This is the potent time to start to really think about the possibility of new beginnings. It's, it's time to allow yourself to, re to release the old mates and say, what do I want instead? Right? Putting that power of choice in. What do I want instead? This is setting us up for that flight that I'm talking about, releasing the weights and stopping that downward spiral into the depths and reversing it and starting that upward spiral. And then the sun is going to move into Sagittarius on November 22nd, which is the energy archetypally of fire of the teacher, of the god, of the sage, of the archer who is pointing to the skies. The teacher gets to come after that Scorpio energy and says, here's what I've learned from that. Let me now share it. So our 
world so our community can really experience the potency and we don't all have to make the same mistakes because we learn from each other and we start to exchange more codes. So those depths of what we're in right now with November could, if you choose to rise, turn into dazzling heights with the expanded perspective that Sagittarius also has, right? Pain becomes purpose when and only when we allow it to become our teacher and our guide. And we go, oh, that was the lesson that I needed to be able to do this next thing. And that's not an easy thing to do, but activating this superpower is going to let you rise into this light that illuminates the planet, okay? We are seeing another wave of people rise to be lighthouses and leaders at the end of the year. Starting now, it's already begun, but it's a slow rise and a wave. And so this next group of people rising up as light workers, lighthouses, guides, teachers, healers, is incredible. Activists, people who are using their voice and shining their light, right? This is where we're headed, where people have cleaned and cleared so much of the density that has been hiding their own personal soul light, their heart light, that they've, they've cleaned enough of it up by turning the pain into the treasure, by turning the lead into gold, that you can see their experience, their wisdom, their heart, and it shines out. And then other people have that light to be guided by, right? It's this wave of personal liberation that happens where people decide to own their path, own their pain, own their magic and their wisdom and step into greater service to humanity simply by being themselves. Now, when the moon is full in Gemini, on the 27th, there is, and the sun is in Sagittarius, this opportunity to really release the, how do I want to put it, barriers that you have to communicating your wisdom. That's what's really coming through. So I'm just seeing this release of the density around the throat and owning and being able to speak your purpose, your story, your light, and share it with the world. It's also a great time to really see the spaces between the two sides, right? Us and them. What actually exists? It's not a hard line. What exists in between that? What exists in between? Where is there an overlap? There is the magic of perspective and finding common ground. This full moon in Gemini is like, how can you learn to take your personal experience and share your wisdom with groups of people who are not you and they're not totally like you, but they're able to, you're able to find the ways to communicate with them from the commonality. So finding and erasing the hard line between you and them and kind of like blurring it out. So it's, softer and you can see that there is more in common between you and me and humanity than sometimes we have previously thought so it's a great time to also on the 27th and around there there's always a three-day window to uh, really release the blocks of communicating your own lessons to amplify your potency and your power because right now when I look at the world and it's absolutely chaotic because everything is being illuminated that has stayed hidden and we're seeing it full force. I want to tell you, it is not time to run and hide. Not you, not the person who's listening to this. If you've listened all the way to this, you are someone who has keys and codes for others and you have it in you, even if you don't know how, even if you don't know how you're doing it, but a lot of you know, and you're just second guessing yourself. So stop that by the way. It's not time to run and hide. It is time to rise and shine. November is the depths to the heights and everything in between, okay? So allow yourself to be in flow with what is. If you resist it, if you're like, no, I don't want to go through the emotions. No, I don't want to feel the things. No, I don't want to. You're going to stay stuck there. So Scorpio is a water element. And that means flow, fluidity, and feelings 
need to flow. If they stay stuck in you because you're not fully feeling them, you're not allowing them, you're repressing them, you're rejecting them, they will stay stuck and stagnant in you. And you know what water gets like when it is stuck somewhere. It is stagnant, it decays, and it's gross. You don't want that inside of you. So you're going to need to practice. There's no perfect on this. Practice when you look at the world or your life and it's not what you desire. You can cry about it. You can feel the feelings fully, but then allow them to flow through you, out of you, instead of holding them. And you're going to have this spaciousness. And it's in that spaciousness that you can tap into the next piece for yourself. And as I said, this is not going to be something that everyone will be successful at yet. But the more of us that tap into the magic of this emotional alchemy, turn the lead into gold, the heaviness, the density, the pain into wisdom and purpose and passion and fire to create change, the more that it will happen to the collective consciousness. So I am inviting you to rise and shine, to come with me, to play in divine alchemy and to be the change that the world needs to see. When I start really channeling from spirit, it starts to rhyme and then I, my human gets a little embarrassed about that. For those of you who are saying, okay, yes, and wow, how do I do that? And you are already a healer who has some practice under your belt. Maybe you have one modality already. I want to share with you an opportunity to rise and shine and really create more impact in your life and in your business by scaling what you're sharing with transformational experiences. I'm doing a free masterclass to teach people how you can actually work less so you have more time to work on your frequency and your own emotional alchemy and still have more money, more impact, more illumination, more magic, and really help at a bigger scale without having to work harder. So I'm going to leave a link for that. We're beginning in mid-November right at the end of Scorpio season, the beginning of Sagittarius season, where we're calling forward the healers, the teachers, the guides, the wisdom leaders. And this is a chance to change your life and change the way that you are helping people on the planet and move from doing single sessions into workshops, events, retreats, even uh, adding in transformational journeys in your one-on-one -on -one instead of doing single sessions with people. I'm going to bring you through a free workshop experience to help you remove all of the stuff that's in the way of you doing that and see what's possible and get your next right action steps. So leaving that link below. And I'm just so excited to be able to honor people who are ready to rise and shine. And if you're like, that's not me yet, that's okay. Keep doing your inner work. This Alchemy is for everyone at the right and perfect time, okay? Not necessarily the healing and teaching part, but activating your capacity to be a lighthouse, to be a guide, that is personal journey. All of us are on our luminous evolution. So take very good care of yourself here in November. I'm going to just say hydrate, rest, move your body, move the feelings, be creative, be connected to community, take breaks when you need to, and take aligned action so you don't feel like you are doing nothing, right? A bit of movement is better than none at all, okay? We're calling in more flow. We're calling in more clarity and prosperity for the entire world. Set your intention with me. And hope to see you at Rise and Shine, and I will see you for the De December update as well, where we'll talk more about coming up to the end of the year and the potent solstice energies. All of my love. You're doing an amazing job by being here, by the way. Just by being on Earth right now, you are helping us shift the reality.